In this video, we're going to look at and see if we can build some formulas. So we're going to look at a real life situation or scenario and try to create a formula using our algebra skills. So let's have a look at the first example. So we're asked to find the perimeter for the shape and to write a formula for it. So let's say that P is equal to perimeter. So P equals can be our first step. Now we can see and we know that the perimeter means all around the outside of a shape. So if we start at a particular point and we move around and add up everything, then we should be able to find an expression for the perimeter. So our perimeter will be B plus A plus C plus A plus B. So we've kind of done it already, but we, of course, we can simplify this. We have an A and an A together there. So that means we have two A. We have a B and a plus another B. So we have two B. We also have this C. So a simplified version of the formula would be the perimeter is equal to two A plus two B plus C. Now in part B, we're told some information. A is two, B is three centimeters, and C is five centimeters. So let's find that perimeter now. So we're gonna use substitution to help us. The perimeter is equal to two lots of two, because A is two, plus two lots of three, because B is three, plus five. Simplifying, we have four plus six, plus five. P is 15. Now, these were given in centimeters, so our answer for P should be in centimeters too. It's a length. So P is equal to 15 centimeters. So let's read another one and see if we can try a slightly more challenging example. An emergency engineer charges a basic fee of 20 pounds plus eight pounds per hour when repairing central, central heating systems. Find a formula for calculating the engineer's charge. Well, let's say that the total charge that the engineer makes is called C. So we'll start by saying C equals, and we've got something to find there. So this 20 pounds here, this is added on to at the beginning, regardless of the number of hours. We also have this eight pound per hour. Now the um, formula we need is gonna be dependent on the number of hours. We need to include this. So let's call H, H can be the number of hours. Now, if we have one hour, well, we have one lot of eight pounds. If we have two hours, we have 16. We have two lots of eight pounds. If H is three hours, we have three lots of eight, which is 24. So the hourly amount that we calculate is gonna be eight H. 10 hours would be 80. Eight times 10 is 80. Four hours, we would have 32. Eight times four is 32. So the eight H is this hourly amount, but we have to remember there's that 20 pounds on top. So let's just add that, that's a fixed fee. That's gonna stay like that. So our engineer's charge is going to be 8H plus 20 if H is the number of hours. Okay, three consecutive numbers are to be added together. If X is the smallest number, what are the other two? Well, consecutive means one after another. So for example, four, Four and five are consecutive numbers because they're next to each other. There's one after another. So if we're thinking about three numbers and the first one is X, well, the next one is gonna be X plus one if X is the smallest. The next one after that would be adding another one on the end, X plus two. So here are our three smaller, sorry, here are our three consecutive numbers, X, X plus one and X plus two. B. Write down a formula for the total t of all three numbers using your answer to part a. So we're told that the total is t. So we're going to start off by writing t equals. And of course, this question is implying that we have to add up these numbers. So if we know what these three numbers are, we've got to add up an x plus an x plus one plus 
and x plus 2. We are taking these three numbers and we're just going to add them up. But of course, we can simplify. Now, we have three x's there, x plus x plus x. So that's worth 3x. We also have a 1 and a 2. Well, that makes a 3. So our final formula is t equals 3x plus 3. On to our final example. A gardener builds paths using paving slabs laid out in a pattern as shown, with white slabs on each side of a row of red slabs. We're referring to this picture here. If n red slabs are used, how many white slabs are needed? Well, of course, for every one of these red slabs, which we kind of are here, we have double the amount. This one has two whites either side. And the one underneath has two whites either side. So if there are n red slabs, we need 2 times n, or in other words, 2n. Now, another gardener puts white slabs at the end of each of the paths, as shown. If n red slabs are used, how many white slabs are needed? Well, we already have a formula for some of this. Because, of course, if we have n of these, these are the red slabs, right? Okay, we've got n of those. Then all of these, well, that's going to be worth 2n. But if we have this pattern, we have to put three at the end and another three at the other end. So we're always going to have to write a plus six for whatever we do with the 2n. So our answer is 2n plus six. I hope this video helps you to find formulas from real life situations.